What is going on, YouTube? I am Lamont at Large. Today, we're at the Forest Lawn Cemetery here in Beaumont, Texas. I know, I know what you're thinking right now. Where's your hat? I forgot it in my van. Don't feel like walking back there to go get it. I feel a little bit naked, but uh, we'll continue on with the video. So today, I wanna show you a part of this mausoleum right here that I seen on YouTube. Uh, somebody had vandalized it. Um, I'll explain more about uh, what I'm about to show you. So let's get right on into it. It's so funny how everywhere that I go, I always seem to come back, you know, oftentimes sooner than later. I was just at this cemetery, I want to say it was two weeks ago. And I left the area, I went down to Galveston, uh, spent a couple days in Houston. And then I came back this way because there's a uh, video that I want to do for my other channel, and I forgot to visit a uh, famous grave. It's down uh, near uh, Port Arthur. So I'm just online looking stuff up, and I see a video from the first week of July of 2020. So right here at this very mausoleum, some idiot, some yahoo, for some unknown reason, broke into this mausoleum and... Uh, vandalized uh two of the uh, interred uh people that were here in this mausoleum and one of the coffins they pulled out and i that's about all i know of what they did i don't know if they stole anything from the bodies i don't know why they even did this uh, i believe nobody was apprehended in this crime and they do believe that somebody, whoever did this, whatever person or persons uh, committed this crime somewhere between July 1st and July 3rd of 2020. Now, the reason why I'm here is because I'm always curious to see if they fixed it or what it looks like now. You know, first and foremost, before anything, you gotta remember guys, these, businesses these cemeteries they're a business and they're in the business of making money making a profit each and every single month so some cemeteries they'll go more out of their way to fix things versus others not so much and i've been getting a little bit more interested in the ones that don't fix things so as you can see this is the exact location of where the uh, mausoleum was vandalized now these two right here these were the vandalized uh, crypts if you will now as you can see there is some kind of damage right there that is probably where they used whatever uh, instrument or tool to pry open uh, the uh, the wall if you will and looking on the ground, I can't tell, if you see like on your screen right now, you, you would see like there was the stain that was leading from the coffin out onto the ground. Now, I don't see that right now, so I'm gonna guess that uh, they actually did a, 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 a pretty good job of uh, washing it. Now, as you can see, there's no names of the people where, um, there would have been now there's either two conclusions to that uh number one they moved them somewhere else uh they could have been moved up there i don't know i don't know the names of the persons uh, whose uh resting place was vandalized so they were either moved or this part i hope this is not the case they're still there and the person who is the quote unquote property owner is supposed to pay for that to be fixed and they never did. So they just put two blank uh, walls up. So I'm hoping that, uh, you know, the first one is more, more of it than, uh, than anything, you know, stuff like this. I never understand why people, you know, you get bored kids uh, coming out here vandalizing stuff uh just being all just stupid i i don't i don't understand why people do stuff like that 
maybe you got some satanic worshipers or you got some just truly sick and twisted individuals. Okay, so this is locked. So I'm pretty sure, well, I guess it's open if you go the other way. All right. So I don't see anything in here. So this looks like uh, this would have been an older one. And you know, when you got like older mausoleums like this, uh, I'm always have anyways curious as to what uh, these empty slots, if they've been bought, but they've never been uh, used or they're for sale. I don't know, I guess you'd have to contact the office. So anyways, so what we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to uh, take a look at some of the graves uh, here at the Forest Lawn Cemetery. By the way, before I segue, I just noticed a name for Tita. I, I probably am wrong. I don't know if that's the different spelling. I'm probably thinking of Fratita, the people that own the UFC. I don't think that's the exact name. Anyways, I just babbling so let's go outside and check out some graves and over on the other side of the cemetery is a very well-known celebrity grave and that of course is of jp richardson also known as the big bopper uh, he was one of the three stars along with richie valens and buddy holly uh, who died on February 3rd, 1959, uh, they crashed a plane over in Iowa after a concert. Uh, it's a weird story about how the plane crash happened and who was supposed to be on the plane and off of the plane and all of that. And uh, this is his wife uh, who was pregnant uh, with his son when he died, Adrian uh, J.R. Winner. I think she had gone on to remarry. And uh, of course, uh, if you come over here, there's a little bit of information about uh, J.P. Richardson. You know what's so funny about uh, that song that made him so famous, uh, Chantilly Lace, is that, you know, I, the song I, I want to say, and this is just me remembering, I think it came out in 1957. And if you listen to the song, it even today, it's kind of suggestive in a not so suggestive way and when that song came out uh, a, a lot of radio stations wouldn't play it because of uh you know the the sexual innuendo uh in the uh in the song but even though some radio stations you know more of like the you know the high holy roller ones wouldn't play it um some of them ended up later on playing it after, you know, being bombarded with uh, requests for it. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really a funny song if you listen to it and you just really listen to, like, how he uh, talks in it and sings in it. And uh, it's, a, it's a really good song. And, uh, you know, even today, you're like, it, it would make some people blush. But, um, yeah, very... Uh, very tragic in, uh, in how that all went down. Uh, maybe uh, later on on my other channel, I'll head to Lubbock and visit Buddy Holly. I always love on the some of these stones when they were older when they died that they put their younger picture up Herbert Earl McCormick September 8 1894 to February 24th 1939 uh, Herbert at the time of his death was a salesman at the Pittsburgh water heater company uh, he was born in Rochester New York and he died 
of pneumonia. And uh, this is his wife, uh, Mina McCormick, who's buried alongside of him. This is uh, Mildred Zaharias at 18. She set two world records in the 1932 Los Angeles Olympic Games in the 80 meter hurdles and the javelin throw. Excelling at all sports, became a professional athlete and won five major titles as a championship golfer. Was nicknamed after famous baseball player Babe Ruth, married George Zaharias 1938 and was voted outstanding woman athlete of the first half of the 20th century by the Associated Press 1949. If you were a fan of golf in the 1940s and the 1950s, uh, Mildred, or as she was referred to as Babe, she was the most popular woman's golfer uh, at the time, uh, along with the two gold medals that she won in the 1932 Olympic Games. Uh, she won 10 LGPA championships. And uh, this is her grave right here. And it's inscribed, world's greatest woman athlete. She died at 42, she died of cancer. And above that is a plaque that says, it's not whether you win or lose, but how you played the game, Babe Ruth. I'd always be curious when I read about how people were athletes so long ago, how they would compare with today's athlete. Now, of course, you know, you got uh, sports and modern medicine has made such uh, advancements. I'm pretty sure every single athlete in today's day and age would just run right past anybody that was born in the, the 19 teens or the 1920s. But, but, if you gave them a training camp and 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 a year of you know working out and, and you know like I would love to see uh, Babe Ruth uh, try to see if he could hit off of uh, uh, what's the the, uh, the Otani guy from the uh, Angels or stuff like that. Uh, I mean, I wish I had the power where I could have Joe Frazier, you know, uh, box uh, Tyson Fury. Or Muhammad Ali versus Tyson Fury or whatever. It's just the kinds of uh, innate things I think of uh, as I'm driving uh, aimlessly around the country. So rest in peace to Mildred Babe Zaharias. A self-inflicted gunshot wound ended this man's life. This is Amos Joseph Davis. And I, at the time of his death, he was a truck driver. And uh, he got into a really, really bad accident uh, and it severed his lower extremities and he bled to death. Only lived to be 33 years of age and he's buried next to his daughter, Mary Davis. And she died very young too. She only lived to be 37. She died of some kind of an intestinal blockage. a mother and a daughter who both died in a car accident on July 24th, 1971. Uh, Juanita right here, she died of a broken neck from that accident and her daughter who was 12 years old, Elena Florence, uh, she died of a uh, fractured uh, skull. And next to them is the father, Joseph Cavanaugh. Kenneth Young Franklin Jr., October 10, 1958 to July 3rd, 1977. Originally, he was from New York, and at the time of his death, uh, he worked construction, so he was just general labor. And on that date, um, I don't know if he was with some friends or by himself, but uh, he had climbed a tree, and he jumped into what appears to be a sand pit or a quicksand and uh, he went under and uh, 
he was uh, unable to be saved. Okay, guys, I am out of here. I uh, just wanted to stop by really quick and check out to see what it looked like three years later. And, uh, well, you know, since I was out here, uh, just come out here, check out some graves. I'll definitely come back here uh, another time. Live, but not live, still alive by the grace of God. I'm Lamont at large. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you hopefully on the next one. Peace out.